Hey guys, what up? So in this video, I'm going to be talking about five ways to not make money as a developer. So uh, a lot of videos out there are telling you how to make money, how to be a developer, all this other stuff and everything. And, and you guys, if, you, if you've known uh, my channel for any amount of time, you've known that uh, I've, I've said first and foremost, I don't have the answers. Um, so a lot of people are like, hey, you got a job, you don't have a, 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 a programming degree or a degree at all, and, and you're still a programmer and things like that. So you know, they look to try to repeat that success. And unfortunately, a lot of times when you're trying to repeat somebody else's success, uh, it's already, you know, too late, or it's just a different situation and things like that. So uh, I'm not saying that somebody can't or that they'll even have an easier time than I did. It's just that nobody has those answers. So this is just five, um, five things that I quickly thought of, uh, you know, not in, in somewhat of a joking sense, but also, you know, in, in uh, a very real sense as well. So let me go ahead and get started. Uh, first one is follow the advice of fake programmers. So, uh, and, you know, unfortunately, if somebody doesn't have a programming job, they've never had a software development job, they've never worked for a major corporation uh, or even a startup for that matter. And when I'm talking about startup, I'm talking about more than just some simple bullshit web development. Oh, hey, I downloaded a template and installed it for some pizza shop down the street. You know, that's more consulting, you know, bullshit work. Now, being a real developer, like you're working for uh, large code bases, you know, multi-million dollar projects. Uh, developers are making quite a bit of money because they have to know quite a bit of, uh, about what they're doing. Um, so you follow shit advice. Um, you're gonna you, uh, really, you know, you follow the the career of somebody who has a shit career, then you're, you're probably gonna have a a, a a shit time as well. So um, you know, they're they're just a there's so many resources out there that they're telling people how to find success, and uh, they don't even have success themselves. And 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 that's one of the things that I think just gives the entire internet. Uh, and, and really everybody a bad name, uh, myself included. And one of the reasons why I've you know, sometimes second guess even what I've done uh, in the past as well, just because, like I said, I can't guarantee success for anybody. So spend time on Upwork or the like. So I've actually registered to sites like Upwork uh, in the past when I was um, you know, basically considering the fact, oh, you know, I can do this script or that script or do this little bit of work and things like that. Um, but the, the fact of the matter is those sites, are, they're just a race to the bottom. They're, they're pitting you up against uh, some of the poorest countries in, in the world uh, where people literally will work for peanuts. They'll, they'll work for $5. Uh, PewDiePie had that, um, that, that video that, that had a lot of controversy where he paid somebody $5 on Fiverr or Fiverr, whatever the fuck it's called, uh, to, to basically hold up Nazi and racist slogans. Uh, on the side of a street corner, and these people were willing to do it for five dollars. Now he was an asshole for doing that because clearly people, um, you know, are very, you know, are very poor, and five dollars goes a long way in some of those countries. But the problem is, is that, uh, you know, in the United States, if you don't, if you don't have a hundred thousand dollars a year in the United States as a family, uh, you're not doing very well. Um, so middle class is anywhere from probably like seventy thousand. Uh, any you know upwards to about 125, 150 or so, and for most places around any major metropolitan area, you kind of need that amount. Otherwise, you know you're not you're going to be hard pressed to have you know new cars, vacations, and things like that. So, um, you know, and that's kind of you know that sounds real shitty, but that's kind of the American dream is to be able to do all that kind of stuff. And uh, and it's not just America, but you know, it, basically most industrialized countries, whether you're in uh, North America, South America, or even uh, you know Europe and and uh, in other places, so uh, th that's just the, the the fact, though, that, that those Upworks and um, Upwork sites and, and things like that, to me, I find them to be a big fat waste of time, uh, to, to and a surefire way of not making any money, um, because they'll tell you don't you, they'll be like yeah, don't sell yourself short on one of those sites. So if you don't sell yourself short, you're not going to get any calls anyway. So go ahead and you know waste your time and, and give it a try. But um, you know if you're if yeah, it's not going to be a very good time. Next, spend time building a product you won't be able to complete. So I've actually made this mistake many times in the past where I'm spending a lot of time, like insane amounts of time, building a product that just isn't feasible. I don't have the capital. Uh, I don't have the, you know, the, even the, either the know-how or the programming uh, uh, resources in order to make something a reality. A lot of times we don't look into the actual infrastructure and how much certain things cost to be able to get off the ground. Um, and, and for that reason, if we're, if we're spending time on those products, unless we're trying to build our skills, we're wasting our time. So, uh, it, you know, it is great. Like you learn a lot from failures and things like that, but you shouldn't be failing, uh, on something that wasn't sustainable in the first place or wasn't even a, a remote re reality. The unfortunate thing about, about that though, 
uh, and this is something I've learned along the way is like you want to be a dreamer, but at the same time, um, you know, the, these these failed dreams give you a much greater perspective on what's actually possible and what's not possible. Um, now, there's always, you know, that, that one in a billion or one in a million shot, which uh, if you're like me, like you don't want to rely upon those one in a million shots. Like You want to have something much more surefire, you know, one in 10 shot to succeed, something like that. Uh, which even that is terrible odds. Uh, but it was like it, that, that reference from the Titanic movie where uh, the, the main character, Jack, was uh, downstairs with the aristocrat, uh, aristocrat, yeah, aristocrat, uh, I think Aristocat uh, from the Disney movie. But anyway, uh, aristocrats from, you know, the, um, from England and the United States, and like they're all, you know, very, you know, super rich, and, and his character is not. And uh, the one rich guy's like, He's like, uh, yeah, I, uh, we like to define our own luck and things like that. So basically, these guys are, are making the rules and uh, you know, and playing by their own rules and things like that. But the point is, is that um, you want to obviously you know create your own luck. You don't want to rely just on you know some sort of miracle chance that that your product's going to succeed or that you're going to have success. So the next one is start a blog, and this is also for like a vlog YouTube channel. It's great. I think it's great for marketing. It's been great for me, obviously, but I've also put in um, over four years of, of effort into this channel. So if you're just like starting off, if you think that you're going to make money as a developer, trying to be uh, a YouTube star or something like that, uh, definitely go out and make your channel. You know, do do what you can to try to promote yourself. But I would say, it, it, to my advice, is to use it more as a portfolio, um, which is what I even consider this channel. Uh, even though it does bring in income and things like that, it is definitely more of a portfolio than it is any sort of thing that I rely upon uh, to feed my children or pay my, my mortgage or anything like that. So, um, you know, definitely use social media to your advantage. But the funny thing is, is I've actually talked to younger children. Um, in fact, my daughter had a friend that uh, his actual plan was to be a YouTube star. So, like, th that is like a terrible plan. That is one of the worst plans I can ever think of. Uh, for my children or anybody that I care about to, to have. Um, I think it's great to pursue it, uh, but if that's like your dream in life, I mean, I don't know, man. There's just, uh, it's, it's, it's an interesting world that we're living in for sure. The final one is live in the middle of nowhere. So uh, unfortunately, like the tech centers are, they're in selected areas. I say around the country within, you know, the obviously United States is what I'm talking about since that's where I'm located. But, um, you know, being, being, um, if you're not established already as a programmer, it's hard for you to live in the middle of bumfuck nowhere USA. Like, it's much easier for you to be able to network and find opportunities um, because networking, personal networking, is one of the best ways in order to be able to find jobs. In fact, even now, like, um, you know, it's through networking, through personal connections that I feel like I would have no problem finding a job anywhere. Uh, but that is the most important thing to actually know people that can get you in the door, get you past that whole HR experience because, you know, it, it, that, that it, it's just so much easier that way. Otherwise, uh, your, your resume could be lost in a stack of thousands. Um, so, so if you live in the, like I said, in the middle of nowhere, then it's going to be much harder for you to build a network, um, you know, some sort of, you know, middle of like middle Georgia area is not going to have a bunch of tech meetups and stuff like that. Uh, compared to you know DC, New York City, Silicon Valley, like things like that. So, uh, I would definitely say you know trying to if you have the ability to relocate to uh, an area where there's more opportunity. I mean that's clearly that's always been the recipe for success. If you look at like Los Angeles or trying to get on Broadway, if you're going to be on Broadway or something like that, you're going to New York City. If you're trying to get into Hollywood, you're going to LA, um, and that's what people do. And and you know a lot of times they go out there and they don't find any success. So it's not like it's it's a surefire way. But once again, you're going to have a much harder time. Uh, in the middle of Georgia. Now, even even though we're all socially connected via the internet now, uh, and we do have the ability to, to communicate with each other, it's still very difficult to build business connections and be able to get capital and things like that um, when you can't meet people face to face and um, and you don't have uh, connections around to even be able to help you get things off the ground and things like that. So those are just uh, five quick things, like I said, that I thought of that um, that can be a surefire way of not making money in this industry. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Have a good day. Bye. Hey, guys, so a lot of you ask me, how do I get my foot in the door to become a programmer? And I just want to take a moment to mention Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp is a 12-week intensive course that focuses on the technologies of the here and now for web development. Uh, some of the things that they're actually teaching in this 12-week course, it's geared to get you into the, the industry by focusing on things like jQuery, Node.js, 
React, Angular, how to use GitHub. So a lot of the things that you're going to need to do as a developer, as soon as you start, they're going to be teaching you in this in this coding boot camp. And the entire goal is to be able to get you into the industry within 12 weeks. So if you guys are interested in learning more information about Dev Mountain Coding Boot Camp, just check out the link in the description tab of this video. Thank you for watching and have a good day. So this video is also sponsored by Eduonix Learning Solutions. And in the description tab below, you're going to find two links for Eduonix, and both of them are at a 50% discounted rate. So if you like to have money off, like I do, then uh, definitely be sure to check that out. But one of the projects they have here is uh, Projects in Laravel is the name of the course, and it says Learn Laravel Building 10 Projects. So you're going to build 10 different projects in this Laravel course. It's 50% off. You just have to visit the link, sign into your account, click Buy Now, and the coupon code will already be applied. So you just have to pick your payment option and go from there. Um, that is for learning Laravel, which is the popular PHP uh, framework that everybody seems to be talking about these days. The next uh, course that they're promoting this month, which is also at a 50% discounted rate, is the ability to choose 10 different courses here. So uh, you can choose 10 different courses. They're all at a discounted rate of, of uh, a flat rate of, uh, of uh, $49.50 for 10 different courses here, and you can choose from any one of these uh, 75 courses that, that they have available. So once again, same thing, just click Buy Now. Once you select your 10 different courses, um, basically you go through, you click uh, 10 different courses, and two more courses to unlock the bundle. There you go. Click Buy Now. And once again, you just pick your payment option and you're good to go. All right, guys, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you guys subscribe and vote on my uh, videos if you would, please. I appreciate that. And have a good day, guys. Bye.